In this video I'd like to make some wooden shelves and I'd like to show how to use SketchUp and the subtract tool in SketchUp to do the joinery. Now the first thing that you'll need to do is find the subtract tool. Um, I can right click on the toolbar and customize the toolbar and this brings up a list of tools that are available and down here near the intersect, the union, the trim and then here is the subtract tool. So what I've done is I've added that subtract tool up to my toolbar just here. You can also access this tool by doing View Tool Palettes Solid Tools and then that brings up the Solid Tool Palette and the Subtract Tool is also shown here. But I just went ahead and added it to my toolbar to make it a little bit easier. So the first thing we'll do is we'll build a shelf. Now we don't need this character here so we'll just go ahead and delete that. So these shelves are going to be 12 inches deep and 48 inches wide and I'll use the rectangle shortcut R and start at the origin and start dragging out and then in the dimension box down on the lower right I'll type in 48 comma 12 and that gives me the basic size of the shelf. And now I use the push pull tool which I'll use the shortcut of P and then I'll grab this and pop it up and then I'll just go ahead and type in 0.75 or you could type 3 slash 4 for 3 quarter but I'll type in 0.75 and now I have a 3 quarter inch thick 12 inch by 48 inch board. Uh, using the spacebar to go back to the select and then I'll just come down here and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the joinery on the side. I like to use a, a stop joint so that it doesn't show on the face of the, of the shelf. So what I'll do is I'll just come here and I'll use the line tool L and I'll find the midpoint of this edge and I'll come over and I'll type in 0.375, get a 3 8 inch line and then I'll come down on the blue axis to the edge and complete that. Like I said, I like to use a stop joint here, so I will use the tape measure tool, which is T, and I'll find the midpoint of the far edge, click once, and then drag along the green axis, and I'll just stop it back one inch. So I'll type one into the lower box return, and now that gives me a reference where to stop this joint. So now I'll go back to the push pull tool with P, I'll grab this, and I'll just push it right back, and then where it intersects that line I'll, I'll stop. Now I'll just rotate around here and I need to go back to the line tool and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from here up and now I'm going to use the P for push pull tool again and I'm going to push this in so it's even with the surface that I just created and then I'll go to the eraser tool E I'll erase this construction line and I'll erase that unnecessary line. So now there's the end of my board it's going to be the shelf. And what I basically want to do is I want to do this on the other end as well. So I'll just come over here, I'll switch to the line tool, I'll draw a 3 8 inch line over, draw a line down to the edge, and then I'll switch to the tape measure tool, find the midpoint, come back along the green axis, type 1, enter into the measurements box there. And now I can take the push pull tool with P, push this back to that line again, and then zoom in down here, the line tool with L, draw this line, use the push pull tool, and then push it back 3 8 And then I can use the eraser tool to erase that construction line and that unnecessary line. So now this is the final shape of my shelf, and it's going to be the shape of all the shelves in this project. So I'm going to triple click it. I'm going to type the G for make component, and I'm just going to call this a shelf and hit return. Now you can see over here I also have the outliner window and the components window open and this is going to be kind of important for what follows so if you don't have those you want to uh, open them so you can kind of follow along. And so what we'll do is come in here and with this shelf selected we'll use the move tool which is a shortcut of M and then we'll also press Alt on the Mac which I think you're supposed to press Control on the PC so that you'll get the little plus sign next to the tool so that means we're going to copy. We'll click this upper corner here on the shelf and we'll rise straight up in the blue direction. Alternatively you can press the up arrow key right now and it'll snap it to the blue X. So I'm going to move it up and I'm going to move it up 12 inches so I'll just type 12 enter in the box and then before I do anything else I'm going to do 3x and that's going to give me three of those shelves. So when I hit 3x enter and then I zoom out a little bit you can see that I not only did it do the one that I first did but then it did two more and it gave me a total of three. And now we're going to create the side of it. And so to create the side, it's basically a three-quarter inch board that's 12 inches wide. 
So we'll go to the rectangle tool again with R, click at the origin, and then we'll come out here with another rectangle. In the uh, dimension box on the lower right, you'll see it's one inch comma one foot. So I really want to make it three quarters of an inch comma one foot. So I can do 0.75 comma 12. So I'll switch to the push pull tool, and I'll grab that surface and I'll pull it up. And where I want to pull it up to, the top surface of the top shelf. So I'll constrain it by the face in that top shelf and click the left mouse and now I have a board there that's basically as high as I need and it's uh, basically a 1 by 12. Now one thing I do on these shelf units is I'll pull this lower edge and make it a little bit longer so I'll come down and type 3 enter and that gets Now what we'll do is we'll start creating the joinery in this board. So we'll switch back to the select tool with the spacebar, triple click this, type G for component and now it doesn't matter what we name it because this is going to be changing quite a bit here so I'm just going to leave it as the default component 1. So now we want to take this board and put it where it's supposed to be because right now it's not it's you know we're going to have these setting inside this shape we just created so we need to move this board where it's going to be so we'll choose the move tool click once and now you can move it and you want to keep it on the red axis so you hold the shift key and that'll lock it to the red axis no matter where we move the mouse the board is only going to move on the x direction and we want to move that over until it's right even with the basically the bottom of the rabbit here so now when we left click we get this board in the position that we needed to have it so now what we need to do is create the joinery in the board. We need to create those stop dados. So the way to do that is first select the top shelf board, then hold down shift key and select the side board, and make sure you do it in that order. And now you press the subtract tool, which I have up here in the toolbar. And that gives us basically that stop dado that we needed. So now we just need to do that for each of the four shelves. So we'll click it, and don't worry that it disappeared. We'll, we'll click the next one, click the sideboard second, click the subtract, click the next one, click the sideboard second, click the subtract, click the next shelf, click the sideboard second, and click the subtract. And so now you can see that we have what we need in terms of the stop dados. So now at this point, what we can do is we can turn this into the component. Right click and choose explode, then type G for make component, and now we can call it, the, I'm just going to call it the sideboard. And so now it's a component in our design. Now we have to bring the shelves back in to basically complete it. So we'll grab a shelf over here in the components window and we'll bring it down here and we'll put it in place. And this one just so happens to snap to the origin, that's fine. And now that board is selected. So again, we want to move with the M key and then hit Alt for copy and then grab this and start to move it up in the blue direction and just say 12 and that puts it up and before we did 3x so we type 3x again and now we have all four of the shelf pieces at this point we could basically take this sideboard on this side and move it over but before I do that well I, I want another shelf here I want to put a fifth board in this design so I'll select this top board I'll use the move tool and the alt key to do the uh, copy and I'll slide this down and I'm going to slide this down on the blue axis 6 and now we need to put a joint there so it's already selected so we can hold the shift key and then select the sideboard again and do subtract that creates our joint so we can grab another shelf and bring it in here and get it close and then grab the move tool snap it there. Now what that did is that created another difference here. See there? It created another difference because whenever we do a subtract it remakes the component. So we've really lost our sideboard component. So down here we don't have any sideboards in our design in the component list. So down here we will right click and delete that. And now we select this difference again as shown in the outliner. We want to explode it and make a group out of it and call it sideboard again and now it reappears in the outliner as a sideboard. And to get it over to the right side, just come in here, do a move, press Alt or Control for copy, move a copy down to here, and instead of rotating it, right click on it and say flip along red. And now we can come in here and move it back into place like so. And so what that did was that gave us our little shelf unit. You don't see the joinery in the front, which is why I like to do the stop dados.